everybody. Everyone get rich, right? Great franchise. The owner is a great man who is a member of one of my clubs, and he's fantastic. And uh, yeah, they do very well. They're closed on Sunday. It's the Lord's Chicken. That's the Lord's Chicken. Donald Trump mingling with an adoring crowd at an Atlanta Chick-fil-A yesterday. The former president ordering 30 milkshakes during his surprise visit, showing off his retail political skills. Fox News contributor Carl Rove is here, a former White House deputy chief of staff. Great to have you here. Listen to one more woman who says she's with Trump. Watch. I don't yeah, care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. Thank we support you. you. Uh, we support love you. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. <laughs> These kinds of crowds, he draws them when he's able to get there, Carl. Absolutely. And think about the, the, the image that we had. We've got the current president standing in aviator glasses at a Rose Garden ceremony, stiff, uh, can't make eye contact with him, seemingly aloof, formal. And then uh, the former president visiting Chick-fil-A. Who doesn't like Chick-fil-A? And uh, getting a, a, a very warm welcome. So. Uh, campaigns are based on uh, lots of things. Images matter a lot in those uh, in those considerations. And yesterday's image war was mm -hmm. won by Donald Trump easily. And not to mention the denial of the reality of the economic environment for the American people, sort of doubling down on things getting better. The president made the case. Yeah. Yeah, and look, uh, the, the, again, the, the, they've, they've made a mistake last year by going out and talking about Bidenomics. Uh, you, you know, if you've ever been in a marketing class, if something is not popular, don't put your name on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, since the beginning, the so-called Bidenomics, whatever the economic policies of the administration are, have not seemingly helped Americans cope with this uh, uh, issue of rising prices for everything that we come into contact with every day. You go fill up the car, you go pick up groceries, you take the kids out for a happy meal, you go get uh, clothes to get them back to school, you pay the insurance bill, you pay the utility bill, you pay your mortgage, you pay your rent. All of these things have risen dramatically and people feel that and know that and for the president to go out there and say it's working, uh, they, they don't feel it. There's going to be a period of adjustment where we where we come into conformity with these the new reality of higher prices for everything that we uh, use in our lives and what that does to the average family budget. Up nine, prices up 19 percent and median household income down 5 percent. Try try figuring out how to deal with that roughly 25 percent difference in prices and your ability to pay them. And no end in sight. Also, Vice President Kamala Harris hit the campaign trail. She did a podcast um, and she's worried that 2024 could be the last Democratic election. Watch. There are so many layers to what is um, at stake and why I think a lot of people have had it. I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this genuinely could be the last Democratic election we ever have. You're right. Carl, they've been saying this for a long time. And if you look at the polls right now, President Trump and President Biden are tied on who would protect democracy the most. So have the Democrats sort of squeezed all they can out of that lemon? Yeah, I mean, she's talking to the to the to the faithful. She's not talking to the swing voters. I mean, you're right. Both parties uh, have uh, adherents who believe that the other party is an existential threat uh, to the future of the country. But the people who are going to decide the election are the ones trying to figure out who's going to do a better job over the next four years than the other one. And uh, there, there may be a relatively small group of people. They may be 10, 15 percent of the electorate at most. Uh, some of them are weakly committed to one choice or another today. But uh, uh, many of them are still up in the air. And this kind of language does nothing except uh, energize the true believers. And just as uh, saying the election of 2020 was stolen and energizes the true believers on the other side. So uh, a bad move on Kamala Harris's part. She, she wisely was going to Arizona to talk about abortion, which is going to be a problem in that state for Republicans. But again, tone deaf on the part of the Democrats. Yeah, I mean, that her ability to figure out a way to say, all right, I'm going to go to Arizona, I'm going to get on the plane, I'm going to be there and drive in that news cycle, that is smart and flexible of her on that front. Carl Rove, thanks for kicking us off. Thank you, Carl. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.